In this lesson, I'll show you how to find the tension of two cables holding a beam. The question reads, consider a non-uniform bar of 200 newtons and 4.0 meters length suspended horizontally between two walls, where the angles between the walls and cables are 37 and 50 degrees. What are the tensions in the cables? And as an added bonus, where is the center of mass? Before we start, I want to mention that this is an equilibrium type problem. The beam is suspended in the air and it's not moving. So when it comes to equilibrium type problems, remember that the sum of forces along the x equal to zero and the sum of forces along the y equal to zero as well. And given that tension is a force, keep that in mind. We'll begin by finding the position where the center of mass occurs. Keep in mind that this calculation, which I'm about to show you, isn't necessary when it comes to finding the tension in the cables. So if you want, feel free to skip this part. That being said, if you want to find the distance along the bar where the center of mass occurs, we use a bit of geometry. For example, let's say that this is the bar and this is the cord attached to the left side and that's the cord attached to the right side. What I will do is I'll extend these two lines representing the cords so that eventually they meet up. So they meet up right here and that point will represent the center of mass. I'll divide this triangle into two where this point occurs. So I'll call this line C and knowing that the distance from here to here is four, I'll call this X and this will be four minus X. Next, I know that this is 50 degrees along the wall. Therefore, if that's 50, then this is also 50 because they're alternate angles. Notice that these two lines, C and the wall, are parallel. And similarly, if that's 37, then that makes this 37. Using the trigonometric function tangent, I know that tangent theta represents the opposite to the adjacent. So if I use the trigonometric function tangent here, I have tangent 37 is equal to the opposite, being x, over the adjacent c. And using it over here, I have tangent of 50 degrees is equal to 4 minus x over c. I'll solve these two equations simultaneously. For example, I'll solve for c here, and I'll solve for c here and make them equal to one another. If I solve for c here, I end up with c being multiplied to both sides and dividing both sides by tangent 37, I get c is equal to x over tangent 37. And if I do that over here, I get c is equal to 4 minus x over tangent 50. So I'll be solving these simultaneously by setting these two equations equal to one another, and your equation should look like this. From here, you use your algebraic skills. So we need to solve for x. I'll multiply or cross multiply both sides. I have tangent 50 times x is equal to 4 minus x in parentheses. Don't forget those parentheses. Tangent 37. I'll expand the right side by multiplying this into 4 and into negative x. And we should get the following. The left side stays the way it is. Then. We will group together all x terms by taking that over to the left side. These two terms are alike. Now I can use my calculator. Make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. Tangent 50 plus tangent 37. Because these two terms are alike, you can add the coefficients being the tangents. And that's roughly 1.9453. 1.9453x is equal to the right side. And as our last step to solve for x, we divide both sides by that value we just found. So for tangent 37 divided by what we just found, and that is approximately 1.55. 1 1.55 is the value of x and Placing that into there and subtracting 4 minus 1.55 is 2.45. The next thing that I will do is create a vector diagram. So if that's 37, that makes this 53. 
And if that's 50, then that is 40. Okay, so pretend that we had two right triangles. And right here is 200 newtons. The tension is going in this direction in both chords. So I need to break these down into their x and y components. And I'll be summing up the x components of both and the y components of both and making sure that they're equal to 0. So for the x components in T1, I'll call this T2, the x component in T1 will be cosine 40, that's adjacent and hypotenuse. So adjacent over hypotenuse, hypotenuse being T sub 1, and that's what we're looking for. Multiplying both sides by T sub 1, we get the expression for adjacent. So T sub 1 cosine 40. That's one of the x components. Looking on the left side now, we will write down t sub 2 cosine at 53 degrees. And since we are putting this on an xy plane, this would be quadrant 1, that would be quadrant 2, that part would be quadrant 3, and that would be quadrant 4. Whenever you're using cosine in quadrant 2, and you're using the acute angle, the acute reference angle, you have to make sure that you write it down as negative. So I'll be adding these two up and making sure that they sum up to zero. And the same thing can apply for the y components. T sub 1 sine 40 degrees. That's for this tension. And for that tension, it will be T sub 2 sine 53. And I won't be making that negative because when you apply the acute reference angle in the second quadrant, using the trigonometric function sine, it remains positive. Remember the cast rule. So you would add these up, and don't forget, you also have to subtract 200, because down is considered negative, and the vectors that go up are positive. So when we add these up, we have to subtract 200, and make sure that all of that sums up to zero. This is what your equations should look like. So for the x components, I have t sub 1 cosine 40 is equal to, and just assume that I move that over to the right side of the equation, it would make it positive. And for these, t sub 1 sine 40 plus t sub 2 sine 53 is equal to positive 200. So these are my two equations that I'll be working with and that I'll be solving for t sub 1 and t sub 2. Now we've done this plenty of times before. I won't be going through the math over again, but essentially if you want to solve for t sub 1 and t sub 2, you can use the method of substitution, where you can solve for, let's say, t sub 1 and equation 1, like this. I'll show you the first equation just to help you out. And if you have any questions, use the comments section below, and I'll respond to you. So you take this, notice that I solve for t sub 1, you sub that into t sub 1, and that gives you a brand new equation with only t sub 2's, which if you solve correctly, you should end up with a value of 153. Then you take this value and you plug it into here. And let's see what happens. 153 cosine 53 divided by cosine 40 and the other one is T sub 1 being 120 newtons. So we've done this math before, and if you're still not comfortable with the math, leave a comment in the comment section and I'll definitely help you out. Otherwise, these are the two answers to the tension and how to find the center of mass for two cables that are holding up a beam.